Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So people have been giving me positive feedback on the logical fallacies, and which I appreciate. Thank you very much. So I thought I would continue with that and do, uh, you know, maybe three or four more of these with a couple of fallacies in each. So, you know, this is the sort of trying to think in the time of the pandemic. And um, three more that have come up um, in my mind as I've, if I've been reading the news, which I try to avoid doing too much of, but you'll see a lot. Um, are common fallacies. But these fallacies, of course, are around all the time. It's just they're becoming uh, much more important and much more obvious, like, perhaps, uh, now that we're in this sort of extraordinarily challenging and emotive situation. So the first one is the uh, middle ground. It's the fallacy of the middle ground or, or the average, you know, however you think of it. Um, and this is a common fallacy. And, and the notion is that, you know, if, if you say... Um, that uh, you want to say, oh, okay, let's say I have a student, and the student says, you know, I think I, sh I should get an A in this class. And I say, no, I think you should get an F in the class. And we go, okay, let's middle ground, let's have a C. Well, ah, I mean, if the student did all the work and they did well on the exams and they did all the tests and were in class, why wouldn't they get an A? I mean, shouldn't they get an A, right? Or, or if they didn't do anything, why shouldn't they get an F? So the notion that the average of two extremes is the way to go um, is just wrong. It's incorrect. And But you see it all the time. If if I go to uh, a used car lot and I say, hey, I'll give you a dollar for that car, and this car salesman say, well, I want a million for it, that doesn't make $500,000 the right price. So meeting someplace in the middle, um, is it does not make it uh, correct. Sometimes maybe, but generally speaking, it's not a good guideline for trying to determine what is uh, the right solution uh, or, or the preferred outcome or what is, in fact, most importantly, what is true. So where you're hearing this all the time right now, of course, everybody wants to know when will <clears throat> this coronavirus thing be over, right? When will the COVID-19 be clear and we can resume our normal lives, day-to-day -day lives? And some people say, oh, you know, we're going to have a magic pill. We're going to have a, a treatment. You know, the summer's going to come. And so in just three weeks, everything will be back to normal. Great. Uh, other people say, no, 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 you know, it's probably 18 months, we're going to have to have a full vaccine, and we're going to have to go through this whole pattern and testing, and then this was 18 months. Like, wow, that's a long time. We don't like 18 months, and you know, but so maybe it's somewhere in between. So maybe it's three months or four months, you know, wh wh wherever the, you know, middle ground between those two are until we go, oh, probably right around there. Well, it turns out, no, because we don't know. One, we don't know. And I'll talk about what we're, one part of this fallacy is another fallacy. But what happens when you try to do this sort of averaging or just meeting in the middle is you overlook all the complexity and the subtlety like many other fallacies. And so one of the questions you could ask yourself is, well, what do I mean by back to normal, right? Does it mean that we're going to return to how everything was before as if nothing ever happened? Probably this is unlikely, which means the time frame is infinite, right? We'll learn until we just forget the, how things used to be, we're just going to be in a new situation. So we may never go back. Um, if it means well, for, for different people, when can I go back to work? Well, depending on the job you have, this may be in a few weeks, maybe in a few months, right? It, 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 that's going to vary dramatically. But if that's your metric, that's a completely different uh, measuring stick. So one thing is to ask, what do we mean by back to normal? How would we know if we had achieved that? Um, and, and so when you just try to say, oh, well, here's an average between two extremes that must be roughly right, this is no, um, doesn't mean any, it has no validity for correctness. So again, uh, another example is if, if I'm up on a crime and I think I'm innocent, I don't think I should get any punishment. If the people who are charging me think I committed the crime, they think I should get 10 years. I don't want to average five years. I'm just, to me, going, oh, okay, we'll just go with five then. No, I'm like, wait, wait, no, time, time out. I don't think five years for something I didn't do is a good compromise. I don't think that sort of middle ground is helpful at all. And so that's one of the, the, the problems when we start thinking this way is uh, averaging things does not equal correctness or, or truth. Um, a part of this, in, in the example of, of the virus, when are we going to get back to normal, besides not knowing what normal means, is another fallacy called an appeal to ignorance. So we're in a situation where we don't know a lot. 
which means we're ignorant. Now, being ignorant is fine. This is not, it has a pejorative sense, but it's not a pejorative term or it shouldn't be. It just means you don't know, right? And we're in a situation where basically there's a whole hell of a lot that nobody knows. And so part of the reason we're unnerved, part of the reason it's so emotive, part of the reason it's so hard to think is because you, we have to start with, uh, oh, hey, we just don't know a lot. And when you don't know, you it can't draw conclusions from that, except for we don't know. You can draw that conclusion, but you can't go, oh, we don't know when this is going to end, therefore it must be pretty soon. That see, because it's like, well, not knowing is not knowing. That's why you can't, you can't, that's why you can't find the middle ground because we don't know the extremes even to do the the other fallacy, right? It actually negates the other fallacy with another fallacy, you know? So this, this problem of trying to say, oh, we don't know how bad it's going to be. Therefore, what? The answer is we don't know how bad it's going to be. Now, part of what people have concluded is because we don't know how bad it could be, we should take certain actions so that we don't find out. Let's avoid finding out how bad this could get. And that way we say we don't know how big the problem could be, so let's try and take steps to mitigate the existence of the problem. Now that is not an appeal to ignorance. That's, that's pointing to the ignorance and saying we don't know what's in that box. Let's not stick our hand in there and find out. could be something bad. Um, and so when you get these appeals to ignorance where people say, you know, we don't know, therefore... April 15th, we'll be back to work. Or we don't know, therefore, it can't be that bad. Or we don't know, therefore, there's not a problem, right? It, just being ignorant of something doesn't mean the problem doesn't exist. So all of these are types of appeals to ignorance. So anytime somebody says, you know, we don't know, therefore, you got to listen very carefully because probably the therefore is just a fallacy. So, you know, we don't know how the pyramids were built therefore aliens, right? Great. And why, why, why do the aliens follow? Why isn't it just, we don't know how the pyramids were built. So again, so, you know, one, the fallacy of the middle ground or of of the average and two, uh, the fallacy of, you know, appealing to ignorance as then, and then drawing conclusions. Um, And the third one, which of course we're getting a lot right now is appeal to fear. And you're hearing this particularly with the economy and you're going, oh, the uh, damage being done to the economy is so terrible, it can't be worth it. So our fear of the damage of the economy means it's not worth it. No. See, just because we're afraid of something or something is terrible doesn't make it not true or not worthwhile. That's the tricky part about it. Sometimes fearful, terrible things are, in fact, accurate and true. There, you know, it's like that's unfortunately, uh, the, the, the world that we live in, right? The great richness of human experience includes terrible things that are, in fact, accurate. And so you can't appeal to fear as a, a, a means of arguing to, that something is true or not true. So it might be that the damage to the economy is terrible, but that the, the, the not damage to the economy could potentially be worse. And notice, because we're in this speculative realm where we're not sure exactly how bad, although we're getting sure every day how bad it could be, um, you know, it is a balancing act. And people are, again, like I mentioned before, you know, you're, you're seeing this horrible damage that we're seeing very real, very personally, very up close and going, is it really worthwhile? And it might, you know, it may be. But the only way to judge that is to say, well, what would the cost be of not doing that? So this is basically if, if you get cancer and you go to, for chemotherapy, like they don't tell you chemotherapy is great for you. No, they say chemotherapy is going to poison you. It's going to be terrible. You're going to have all these awful things are going to happen to you, but it's going to increase your chance of survival dramatically, potentially, depending on you know what kind of cancer you have, et cetera. And so this is a case where it's a terrible thing, but it's a better than the alternative thing. And generally what happens is people appeal to our fear to try and get us to choose the other alternative. So this is really terrible, this is awful, this is bad, this is horrible, therefore the other thing is better. Sometimes uh, the other thing is not better. 
And anyway, you don't use appeal to fear to make that argument. You have to appeal to other issues. You have to appeal to like saying, well, how many lives will be lost? What will the economic impact be of the other side of, of, of this? Uh, are there other options? Again, false dichotomy, right? Are there other possibilities between these two extremes? Of course there are, right? And so on and so forth. And so in each of these cases, the appeal to the middle ground, the appeal to ignorance, um, and the, you know, appeal to fear, you're seeing them all the time. You're seeing them consistently, but, but they're used not just in this condition, but in, when we're trying to think through a pandemic, um, it, uh, recognizing these, being able to see them in the wild, I think will hopefully help us ponder ourselves more clearly and have a better sense of what's going on. And then in general, you can apply these in your own life. And A, try not to do this in your own thinking. I catch myself making these errors all the time, by the way. They're just very easy and natural. And then you go, oh, wait, I'm, I'm doing this again. So now I need to back up and, you know, try to clarify and scratch that out on the paper. And then when you see it, when other people are making arguments, often it's an innocent mistake, sometimes not so innocent, but often people just, again, with fear and emotion, they lapse into these fallacies. And once you recognize them, it's easy to go, oh, wait, I'm not sure the average or the middle ground here is accurate, or yes, this is terrible, but sometimes terrible things are necessary, right? And so you, you, you don't get caught in, in trying to make different kinds of arguments. Rather, you recognize the fallacy, and you can just go, oh, okay, I see the fallacy, I understand the structure of it, and I'm not going to be, you know, sort of misled or misguided by it. So there's about, let's see, so we've done you know, was that six fallacies, I think, roughly? And there's about 12-ish major ones. I mean, there's a lot, but there's about 12 major ones. So, you know, I'll do a couple more of these and explore some more of the fallacies. And uh, thank you for the positive feedback again. And I hope this finds you all well. And stay tuned for more.